you can't erase bad decisions. And guilt many times is a result of a bad choice, and it may follow you the rest of your life. It's an everlasting reminder so that you don't make that same mistake over again. But when given a chance for redemption, take up your sword and never make that same wrong decision again. I bring this up because Goyokin is the ultimate story of redemption and guilt. And it's just told so well that you may find yourself reflecting on it long after watching it. So pretty much for years I've heard about this legendary Chambara movie, and it was known for starring the big three, and that's Tatsuya Nakadai, Tetsuru Tamba, and Kinosuke Nakamura. Many times online you'll see top 10 samurai lists and usually this gets mentioned. But I could never find a copy or stream it anywhere, so I kind of kept it on the back of my mind, just in case it showed up one day. Well, finally, it's available on SamuraiDVD.com, and I was actually lucky enough to get a copy for this review. SamuraiDVD.com is your one-stop shopping for both classic and new samurai films. Most of these films you won't find anywhere else, and the films that I've gotten have all had excellent subtitles and picture transfers. So don't forget to go out and check out SamuraiDVD.com. So actually, speaking of SamuraiDVD.com, before sending me a copy, Merlin mentioned how Goyokin was supposed to be just another Yojimbo movie. But apparently Mifune walked out and then Nakamura took his place. And I'll say, him telling me this before watching it, I found it pretty easy to see just how the role was indeed written for Mifune. But in the end, I will say that Nakamura does do a great job as just playing this kind of Ronin character that just happens to get himself involved with this mystery. Also something I didn't know, Merlin also mentioned how there is a remake by Tom Laughlin of this film starring Billy Jack and it's called The Master Gunfighter and it's set in Mexico. Instead of the famous final battle in the snow at the end, it takes place on the sandy beach. I was planning on watching both of them and comparing them, but the only way you could get this film is just by buying it on Amazon, and I just didn't feel like doing that. While watching it, I did notice a bit of influence from Italian spaghetti western style, so I could see this being a western remake. So the story of Goyokin follows a clan that's having some financial trouble, and so they decide to steal a ship's gold from the Edo Shogunate. Hence the title Goyokin, which means official gold. In order to cover up the fact that the clan stole the shogunate's gold, the clan ends up killing around 30 fishermen so that no one speaks. Meanwhile, the main character, a proud samurai, played by the legendary actor Tetsuya Nakadai, he feels guilt for this genocide committed by his clan and just the fact that he didn't do anything about it. So he ends up leaving the group and he disappears for three years. Basically, he then wanders around Japan until he hears that it's all gonna happen again. And so hearing that, he starts his redemption making sure that it never happens again. 
3年前目をつぶったのは俺の過ちだった。The actor Tetsuro Tamba plays his brother in law, and ultimately, he ends up being the final opponent with which Nakadai will have a big showdown with in the snow. And that's usually the cover of this film that you usually see. I will say that Tamba's character we really don't see too much of, and he's kind of more of a presence than anything else. But just the fact of knowing that he's a Chimbara legend just adds so much more to the final fight we get with Nakadai. The actor of Nakamura plays a spy who's working for the Shogunate, and he plays kind of a neutral character that appears to be on neither opponent's side, and this ends up making him one of the more interesting characters in this, just because you don't really know what he's gonna do. And It's kind of cool watching this just knowing that it was supposed to be played by Mifune. In a way, it does seem like a missed opportunity. Just imagine having the three greatest Chimbura actors in one movie. This would be the most famous movie ever. But regardless of that, I still think Nakamura did a really good job with this character. He's got kind of a sneaky, kind of different personality that I like. Overall, the film has a great cast of characters. But I will say, out of everyone in the film, Of course, Tatsuya Nakadai just once again steals the show. That's not really to put anyone else down, but he's just that good of an actor. Nakadai just has that ability just to let you know how he's feeling without saying a word. You could just look at his eyes and just feel his sadness and guilt. And he does sort of mope around a lot. He kind of responds to people with everything that's a bit of a downer. <laughs> いや侍だあれは俺たち侍の侍だ In fact, his last line in the film is kind of reminiscent of something someone would say in a Kurosawa movie Seven Samurai comes to mind where it's like you won but you really didn't win kind of a buzzkill but either way, Nakadai just has such a strong presence on screen he's enough to just make the movie better I will say, his character in this did remind me a little bit of him in The Sword of Doom. Kind of where you look at him and you could just see he's troubled. Except in this one, he's more of a good guy than in Sword of Doom where he was more of the anti hero. But in this film, he's also the character with the most development. When we first find him, he lacks the strength to stop his clan from committing a massacre. He then becomes so hurt by this memory of not doing anything that he wanders Japan being haunted by this guilt. Then, when he finds out that his clan is gonna go and try to commit the same thing, he takes charge this time. And this time, he's not gonna let it happen. Visually, this film is like a fine piece of art. It's colorful and just really nice to look at. You get to see some pretty amazing looking snowy landscapes that were shot on location on the frozen seashore. I will say, this is a great movie to watch during the winter months, especially with the white snow that's just in contrast with the blood. Whenever movies do that, I just love that. I feel like no matter what the season, Japan is always beautiful. So, in the end, I'm glad to have had the fortune of finally seeing this. This really is Hideo Gosha's masterpiece. For a samurai movie, the story is also pretty complex, and it had some pretty ingenious aspects about it. I especially like the sequence involving lighting certain fires, which could have big consequences if the wrong one is lit. It was just a pretty creative concept, and that scene is actually pretty intense. It's really well done, and it's one of the best scenes in the film. I will say, this is a movie you kind of have to pay attention to. I found myself having to rewind certain parts just because I missed some small details. And actually, I did end up watching this movie twice just to get the full picture of everything. And I actually had a really good time rewatching it. Also, it having the big three Nakadai, Tamba, and Nakamura. Overall, I could definitely see it being one of the best samurai movies ever made. And I think it's gonna be on my new top 10 samurai list. So, as far as I know, you can only get a copy of it on SamuraiDVD.com, and it's definitely worth it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you want to discuss more movies like this, then please join my Discord. 
And if you want to help support the channel, then please check out my Patreon. Thank you.